Okay, I am continuing my series on these chapter summaries. Quick bit of revision, and we're going to look at Pure Year 1, Chapter 3, which is Equations and Inequalities. So let's dive straight in. One of the first things we look at in this chapter is simultaneous equations. And this first one I want us to solve, this pair of simultaneous equations that we've got here. Well, there's an exam tip. You should use your calculator to solve linear simultaneous equations quickly. So I'm not even going to use a GCSE method here. I'm just going to put my coefficients as 2 and 3 and then it's equal to four, my coefficients is four and minus one, and it's equal to 15. So I've just input those on my calculator, and very quickly, it'll give me the answers straight away that A is equal to either seven over two or 3.5, and that B is equal to minus one. So you should be using your calculator for things like this. Now for question two, we're going to solve this pair of simultaneous equations. However, we can't type this into the calculator because of the fact that we have got um, these unknowns in here. We've got this extra k as a, a constant that we've got. And as a quick reminder, for linear simultaneous equations, we should either do elimination or substitution. Well, I'm going to do this one using elimination because I'm going to be using substitution for this nonlinear one in a second. But remember, you could do this using substitution as well as elimination. So I think probably the easiest way to eliminate something here is probably to take the second equation and to multiply it by 3, because then I would have a 3y. So I'm going to take the second equation and I'm going to multiply it by 3. So I still have the first, which is my 2kx minus 3y equals 7k minus 9. But when I triple the next one, I would get a 9x plus 3y, triple that and triple that. And then because I've got these two things like this, if I add them together, they will eliminate. So I'm going to do an add. So when I add these, I will have my 2kx plus 9x. The three y's cancel. I'll do this nice and quick. The 7k add the minus 3k is 4k. And then I have the minus 9 plus 27 or 27 minus 9, which is 18. So what I need to do is now make x the subject. So I'm going to factorize on the left hand side. So I get x brackets 2k plus 9 is equal to 4k plus 18. Last step for this x part is to divide by the 2k plus 9. Now, I'm wondering if you can see what you think this simplifies to. Pretty obvious here that the numerator is double the denominator. So actually, when you do this as a division, you just get 2. Now, of course, that's not the end of the question. We also need to find out what the y value is. So I'm probably going to use this equation right here, which is my 3x plus y equals 9 minus k to find out what uh, y is going to be equal to. So given that x is 2, I'll put it in here. So 3 times 2 is 6. So 6 plus y is equal to 9 minus k. And so I'm going to subtract the 6. And 9 subtract 6 is 3. So I get that y is equal to 3 minus k. And it did say in the question, give your answers in terms of k where necessary. So my answer is that x is equal to 2. And y is equal to 3 minus k for this one. OK, we're now going to have a look at an example where there is a nonlinear simultaneous equation. So the first one is linear, but then this one that we've got down here is nonlinear because we've got them being multiplied and we've also got a y squared. The only option for this is to use substitution. So what I'm going to do is where I have this x term here, where I have an x, I'm going to replace it with a 3 minus y. So I'm going to have my 3 minus y minus 3 minus y, y plus y squared is equal to 9. So the only bit you have to be careful of here is expanding this bracket. So we have a y and a 3. That's a 3y, and it's a negative, so it's a negative 3y. And then I have a y times a y, or y times a negative y. So that would be negative y squared, but it's a negative, so it becomes a plus y squared. And we still have that plus y squared at the end there. So I'll start with the y squared. So there's two of those. Then if I look at these terms, I have minus y minus 3y, that's minus 4y. And I'm also going to do this line too. I'm going to do my 3, because it's a quadratic, I want it to be equal to 0. So I'll subtract 9 from 3, and 3 subtract 9 is minus 6, which is equal to 0. So we then have dividing everything by 2, just to make it a little bit easier to do. If this isn't easy to factorize, just go to your calculator and solve it in your calculator. But I'm used to doing these a lot, so I see this factorizing very quickly as a y minus 3 and a y plus 1, which gives me two solutions, either y is equal to 3 or y is equal to minus 1. Again, that's not the end of the question because we need to find out what the value of x is. So I'm going to use the fact that x is equal to 3 minus y, that bit in the blue highlighter at the top. So x is equal to 3 minus y, 
which in this case would be 3 minus 3, which is 0. So we have one of the pairs of solutions is that x is 0 and y is 3. Do the same thing over here. So that's 3 minus y. That's 3 minus minus 1 or 3 plus 1, which is 4. So our other solution is that x is 4 and y is minus 1. Now I'm sure you know if you were to put these graphs, sorry, these equations on a graph, these would represent the coordinates where they are intersecting. So that's everything with simultaneous equations. Next thing we're going to have a look at is inequalities. So we're going to begin by talking about something called set notation, which I'll talk about over here. So when you do set notation, you start off with a curly bracket. You then put the variable that you're talking about and a colon, and then you literally just write in whatever inequality that you have. And obviously at the end, you just finish off by closing off with a curly bracket. Now, if you have two inequalities that are both sort of true, so in this case, we've said that x is greater than 4 or x is less than 2. Well, you obviously can't have those combined into one single inequality because x cannot be greater than 4 and less than 2 at the same time. Obviously, 5 is not going to be less than 2. So the way you do this is you write them using the union, which is this U shape, which you'll have remembered from GCSE in set notation with Venn diagrams. So for this, we would write it with x colon x is greater than 4. We do the union notation and then we do x colon x is less than 2. But this isn't always necessary, this union notation, if you can write them as a single inequality. So let's have a look at it with this first example. It says, write that x is less than 4 and that x is greater than 3 or 3 is less than x in set notation. Well, you just need to think to yourself, do you need to use the union notation or can you actually just write this as a single inequality? Well, can you think of numbers that could make it true? Can you have something that's less than 4 and greater than 3? Yes, you can. You can write this as one single inequality that x is literally just between 3 and 4. So there's that set notation at the beginning. Write the inequality and close it off with that curly bracket. Okay, it says find the set of values. So we are going to do set notation. And we've got these two inequalities. We've got this one and we've got this one. And they both need to be true at the same time because it says and here, not or. So I'll begin by doing my minus 2 with my 4x minus 3 is less than or equal to 1. So to solve this, I'm going to try and get x by itself. I'll add 3 to everything. So when I add 3 to minus 2, I get 1. When I add 3 here, it just gives me 4x. And when I add 3 here, I get 4. And because I want x to be the subject, I'm going to divide everything by 4. So for this one to be true, x has got to be in between a quarter and 1. My next inequality is that I have 3x minus 2 is greater than x minus 1. And I'm going to begin by getting rid of this x here. So it's just going to become a 2x minus 2 is greater than minus 1. I'm then going to add 2 to both sides. So I get that 2x is greater than 1. And when I divide by 2, I get that x has got to be greater than a half. So in this particular one I've now got, I've got that x has got to be greater than a half. And this thing has got to be true. So if it helps, you can think of it almost like as a number line. So I'm saying that I have uh, a quarter would be here, wouldn't it? I'm then going to have a half. Don't worry too much about the spacing of all of this and one. And this one is only going to be true if it's between a quarter and one. This other one is only going to be true if it's greater than a half. So it could be all of those. The only place where they are both true is in that section where they are both being highlighted. So in order for this to be true, I'm going to say that it's got to be in between a half and one. So I'm going to put this in set notation. It looks like it's got to be greater than a half and it has got to be less than or equal to one. That's the only part of the set that is going to make both of these inequalities true at the same time. Now, we also need to know how to do quadratic inequalities, too. Um, I think the class with calculator can actually solve these, but for some reason, the graphics calculator can't. But it's worth knowing the method for this. So what you do is you basically solve the quadratic. You find like these critical values. You do a sketch and then you use that to help you figure out what makes this true. So my inequality is 2 plus x minus x squared is greater than 0. I personally like this to be positive, so I'm going to put everything to the other side. So I'm going to add the x squared, I'm going to take away the x, and I'm going to take away the 2 like this. Solve this in whichever way you want. This one looks very factorizable, I think. So if I factorize it, it looks like it'll probably be an x minus 2 and an x plus 1. Yeah, because that multiplies to minus 2 and they add to minus 1. So this then gives me some critical values. It tells me that it's going to be crossing where x is 2 and where x is minus 1. So you can do yourself a quick sketch 
where it's crossing at minus one and two. You literally don't need these to even be spaced out properly. And the type of quadratic that we're drawing here has got a positive part for the x squared, so it's going to be this shape. Obviously, if it had a negative, it would be this shape instead. Because it's a kind of positive one, again, I'm not too bothered about whether this sketch is accurate or not. We're now just going to reason with what is being shown. So we're talking about this quadratic being less than zero. And less than zero means that it is below the y-axis. This would be greater than zero, so this is less than zero. So the part of the graph that we're actually interested in is this part here, which corresponds to it being between minus one and two. So putting that in set notation, I will do x with the colon. It's between minus one and two. Okay. So now that we've got this one sorted, we're going to have a look at the use of the discriminant. This has came up in chapter two with quadratics. It comes up again and gets used quite a lot here. So let's have a quick look at this box because it's got a nice summary of what's going on here. The solutions to pairs of equations represent points of intersections of their graphs. We already know that really. And then this is something I've not mentioned in my videos before. It's not like official language at all, but I've used this with a, a class a couple of years ago and I thought it was useful. That when you are doing the algebraic process of solving two simultaneous equations like this one and this one here, an offspring quadratic is often produced during that algebraic process. And you'll see that during this thing, that when we combine these together, we result with a quadratic. And I often call that the offspring quadratic because it's like the result of these two equations being combined together. What we can then do is we can apply the discriminant to this offspring quadratic to determine the number of intersections because the number of solutions of that quadratic will correspond to whether there's two, one, or no solutions. So we should remember with stuff from the discriminant before, two solutions is when the discriminant is positive. One solution, which is where the curve or the lines, uh, the, the curves or the curve and the line are tangential or a tangent, that is when the discriminant is equal to zero. And then if they don't cross at all, that is where the discriminant is less than zero. It's a negative. And that should correspond to similar ideas where we talked about a, um, a quadratic crossing the axis, a quadratic just touching the axis, and a quadratic not crossing the axis. We've just adapted it now to the idea of two curves or two lines crossing each other. And then this is the part that people sometimes find a bit overwhelming, is that sometimes when you're doing the discriminant to the offspring quadratic, you get another quadratic being formed. And they're all talking about different kinds of things. The first quadratic is referring to an actual curve. The second quadratic is referring to the solutions of these. And the third quadratic might be to do with the discriminant. So let's have a look at this one that we've got here. It says, given that the line with equation y equals 2x minus 1, and it then says it does not meet the curve with equation kx squared minus 2y plus k plus 1 equals 0, find the possible values of k, giving your answer in set notation. So because it does not meet, I think later on we're going to be saying that the discriminant of the offspring equation is less than 0. And if you don't want to use offspring equation because it's something I've just made up, just at some point, we're going to say that the discriminant is less than zero. So we have got that y is equal to 2x minus 1. And that y equals 2x minus 1, I'm just going to substitute it in that place right there. So that we get kx squared minus 2 lots of y, which is 2x minus 1, plus k plus 1 equals 0. So that's kx squared minus 4x plus 2 plus k plus 1 equals 0. And I can simplify that last section by just adding the 2 and the 1 together. So that's kx squared minus 4x plus k plus 3. And sometimes it's helpful to see that last constant as a bracket, because this thing that we've just found here, this is what I'm referring to as the offspring quadratic. It is the offspring. It's like the, the child of these two equations that we had here and here. And this one's representing how many solutions there are, or what potential solutions there would be. Now, because we want there to be no solutions, we're going to say that the discriminant, I want the discriminant to be less than zero. And in this case, our value of a for that quadratic is k, our b is minus 4, and our c is k plus 3. So when I do my discriminant, I'm going to do b squared, that's minus 4 squared, minus 4 times a times c, and I want that to be less than zero. So working on this a little bit more, I get 16 minus 4k squared minus 12k has got to be less than zero. 
Now you can see we've got another quadratic. This is what I was referring to at this part. Sometimes when the discriminant is applied to the offspring equation, another quadratic is formed. So we had the quadratic of the curve, the quadratic that represented the solutions, and now the quadratic that is to do with the discriminant. So I think what I'm going to do here is put everything all onto the right hand side so that I get this as a positive. So I'll end up with 4k squared plus 12k minus 16. And because everything can divide by 4, including that 0, I'm going to do that. So I get k squared plus 3k minus 4. And now we have a quadratic inequality like on the previous slide. So we're going to do that same technique. You can either put it on the calculator. I think this one looks nice and easy to factorize. So I have a k plus 4 and a k minus 1, which means my critical values are that k is minus 4 and k is 1. When I say critical values, I literally mean the values I'm going to just be drawing on the graph like this. So when it's crossing at these two points, it's crossing at minus 4 and 1. And we're talking about where it is greater than 0. So in the previous one, we were looking at it down here. We're now looking at, at this point. So we're talking about this part of the branch. And we're talking about this part of the branch, which is referring to this part of the axis and this part of the axis. So we're saying that our values for k are greater than 1 or k is less than minus 4. Greater than 1, less than minus 4. But it did ask for set notation. So in set notation, I'm going to do k such that k is greater than 1. These can't be written as one single um, inequality, so I'm going to write them as 2 with the union symbol or I get this part like this. Now, if you want to, you can go onto a website called Desmos. You can input these two things in. When you type in K, you can add in a slider and you can vary K and you'll see that when K is greater than one or less than minus four, they don't cross at all. Okay, really easy one for us to finish up with. They've started asking this a little bit more in some of the AS papers recently. So it's definitely worth knowing about regions on graphs. But all we need to do is to describe this shaded region below using inequalities. Now, this is the only part you need to remember. If we have a solid line like this blue one of the quadratic, that is referring to what symbols? It is referring to these symbols, the greater than or equal to. And I always think solid line uses more ink than a dotted line. So there's more ink when you do these symbols. And obviously the dotted line uses less ink. So it's going to be with these ones. That's just my little memory tip for this. So we're going to try and decide with all of these which we're going to look at. I think the easiest one is probably this x is equal to 1. Well, the area that we have shaded is to the left of it. Anywhere over here has an x-coordinate that is below 1. So I'm going to say the x-coordinate is below 1. And you'll notice I've used this symbol because it is a dotted line. Now I'm going to have a look at this next one, which again is a dotted one. And it's the y equals 2x minus 1. So I just need to decide which one it's going to be. Well, if you think about this, the y coordinate is how much up or down it is. So any of the y coordinates under here are lower than the line. So I'm going to say the y coordinates are lower than 2x minus 1. And then my last one is my 2x squared minus 3x like this. And it looks like it's actually above this line. So all of the y coordinates up here, the y coordinates are higher than the curve. So I can say the y coordinates are higher than the curve. Of course, what I need to make sure I do because it's a solid line is to add in this one like this. So I've described the shaded region below using inequalities. If we really wanted to, we could also do this with set notation. We could say x such that this. We could say x and y such that this thing is true and x and y such that this thing is true and put some union symbols in between. But I'm not going to do it like that because we don't actually need to do set notation for this question. So I hope you're finding these really useful for your revision. I will be going through all of these, hopefully for all of the modules as soon as I possibly can do. If you find it useful, please do like this video, comment on it, tell me it was good because the more I get like that, the more I'm going to want to release more of these videos quickly. Okay, good luck with your revision guys and I'll see you in another video soon.